Welcome back to Making Stuff with Mr. Hoon. It's been some time since we've been together in the classroom studio environment. However, I have been making videos for you periodically, and the next few videos that are catered to my intro to art kids, and that's you, involves your capstone, your capstone project. Think of it as a a project that ends the semester, um, a project that involves many different standards um, or a couple of standards. It involves enduring uh, questions and essential understandings. It really brings together skills that we've explored and, and um, introduces you to a few new ones. But um, essentially, it's a drawing. It's a drawing with color. It respects drawing techniques and a little bit of color theory. It'll take place over the course of about three videos uh, from my perspective. We'll be drawing much the same thing, but you can add your own imaginative flair if you wish. You'll find that this final capstone project is a way for me to give you even more feedback. I'd like you to think of this project as much like writing a term paper in an English class. Very few of you would take your first draft and suggest that's that's my best work. It's just not done that way. That's why they're called drafts. So the initial photograph that you're going to show me is, as far as I'm concerned, a draft. I'm going to have feedback for you. I'm going to have ways that you can meet learning targets uh, more effectively. It's called constructive criticism. And when you've met all of the learning targets that I'm saying, hey, I'd like you to look at these again or consider this technique, uh, and if that takes three drafts, four drafts, fine. Then you'll meet the uh, the learning targets and uh, the standards that you can read and find on your Google Classroom under Capstone Project. So again, much like we've done before, you're going to have videos. I'm going to have content from the internet, stuff for you to read, um, a little bit of review on my Google Classroom under Capstone Project. And this is our first video session. So what I'm going to do here is pause, put it in a different position so we can start drawing together. Uh, this capstone project is a drawn image that brings several techniques that we've explored together and introduces color theory. So it's a mixed media project um, covering a lot of different bases. So thanks so much for listening and thanks for being here making stuff with Mr. Hoon. I will switch camera views uh, presently. All right, welcome back to Making Stuff with Mr. Hoon. As you can see, I switched views. Uh, now we have a point of person view where I'm looking at artwork. This happens to be work I've been creating with my Drawing 1 and Painting 2 class. I'm gonna move this out of the way. Our record or album for the day is Auric Tentacles. Technicians of the Sacred. Yes, this is an English or British band. It goes all the way back to 1980. Uh, they use a variety of music uh, from techno to guitar. They are considered a genre, a genre called space rock. So I'm going to move this down in terms of uh, volume a little bit. And we'll start drawing. I have a mixed-media tablet that I'm going to draw on because most of my drawings, well, let's put it this way, I filled up my student sketchbook. I'm going to be using this as my drawing sketchbook for you to see as I draw. But before we do that, I think it would be a good idea if I could simply find my, uh, oh, here we go. It's under my computer. My examples from some of the other capstone project drawings from the past that involve many different forms of media, drawing tools, making a image that combines them all. I did upload these images to my Google Classroom. You'll just be patient. I'm flipping through some right now. I see one right here. 
<clears throat> as you can see, this is some kind of a reptilian figure breaking free, cracking out of an egg. What better time than now? It is springtime. You can see some of the uh, amniotic fluid dripping down. And this is mixed media in the sense that he used regular pencil to sketch it out, um, colored pencil uh, for subtle blending of values, and, yes, marker. So, it does show the illusion of depth. We have a, a, a foreground, a middle ground, this plane that the object sits on, and, of course, our background atmosphere. And how we treat that matters in creating an illusion of depth. So the creature that you make is totally up to you. I would encourage you to stick with me on the egg portion. Uh, we will go from sketching to application of color in... Um, colored pencil and then we are going to finish with marker now it should be said right at the start marker will go over pencil very easily marker will not go over your oil based or waxy based colored pencils so understand that uh, if you think you're going to put marker over an area that's been blended with colored pencil you're wrong you've got another thing coming so I'll try and slowly move through and you can follow me step by step or just respect that rule that marker's not going to go over colored pencils. As a matter of fact, you might finish with colored pencil in your blending and save yourself some anxiety, some trouble. You can also see here is the same imagery, similar imagery. It's not an exact copy, but we do have an egg. It's casting a shadow. There's a horizon line here. Uh, you can see here, there's a dinosaur or a creature emerging from it. There's a little bit of the shell sitting here on the surface around amniotic fluid. Um, this kind of just shows the development of one of these drawings. There's another one also you can see in this one, things we picked up at the very uh, beginning of the school year with me. The idea of creating depth on a flat surface plane by having really close together horizontal lines that uh, progressively get wider and that in and of itself shows depth you can see here we're combining uh, brown orange and yellow and red to create a gradation of value or a curve around um, the creature so I'm going to take this off and we're pretty much going to start from scratch uh, I will give you some ideas as I move along, you will find that if I want to stop and share an idea with you, uh, I will simply slow down. I might put my finger up like this, and then we'll talk about what I'm attempting to achieve. A little bit of Play-Doh here. Ooh, Play-Doh. Put that away. Don't need it. Hey, we're starting off with graphite pencil. From the beginning of the year and throughout the year, I taught you that graphite comes in different hardnesses. So when you read a graphite pencil that's meant for drawing, you might see something like this pencil is a 5H. It is a 5H. And if you bring that up to the camera and tilt it slightly, you might be able to see that. Now, a 5H meaning 5 hard, it's got very hard graphite, leaves less of itself behind. It's going to have a light gray line. Right here we have a 6B. That's right, a 6B. Uh, I think B, black, dark. We're going to have a really dark gray, if not black, because of the softness of the graphite. And the higher the number means the darker or the lighter it is. And then here we have a 2B. That's right, a 2B. To be or not to be. So darker than any H out there, but a lower number, so certainly not as dark as an 6B or an 8B. So we have with this here, and let's lay out. I've got a ruler. This would be a good place to start. Is just put a horizon line. Remember, Sketching lightly, really important. Now, I might sketch with a little bit more force for you kids so that you can see the imagery. I did get some feedback on some of my more uh, early videos on how difficult it was to see. And part of that has to do with the uh, 
Logitech camera that I do personally own. I just simply couldn't afford to go out and get another one. So I'm going to use a little bit more pressure than I'd like you to use. You definitely see that horizon line there. Um, you should be using an H pencil of some kind of sketch and using hardly any pressure so that you can erase it easily. Now here I'm going to do a helicopter circle, but it's not going to be a circle. It's going to be an oval. Part of it goes above the horizon and part of it rests below. And we've got this oval, messy oval, no big deal. Because we can go along and pick out with a darker pencil just where we think the more accurate lines are. And this is called reinstating the line. We're leaving the mistakes alone. And that's okay, because you, you, if you've been in Mr. Who's studio, no, you know that I put a premium on covering the whole page. So much of this mess is either going to be erased or just covered up with values. So we're at the early stages. Our eggs in there. Always a good idea to have a light source. I think this time I'm going to have an upper left-hand light source coming from the sky. So we're going to have a highlight area here, and then a core shadow area here. And that makes it so we have a cast shadow here, too. So if I, had, if I uh, follow that arrow and just imagine down here where it rests, this would really be the center of my, my uh, cast shadow. Now, my cast shadow should not be any wider than, than the egg. So I'm going to do a, a much thinner oval, an ellipse, if you will, for my cast shadow. Shadow. Much of it is under the egg. You can see here, there's the exact opposite area. great opportunity right here to strengthen the line here make it kind of jagged here and then here great start to my crack speaking of that I think I'll have another one here and I'll keep it like this reinstating the line not worrying about all this mess out here. As a matter of fact, I think I'll put some diagonals here that really show the atmosphere around in the sky. They also help distinguish the contour outside line. Up the A. So I'm really working with this here. I think that I'll put this down here and maybe up like this. And with an eraser now, I can get in here and start to remove the edge of the crack to enable my creature to start emerging from it. So here, this closest edge of the crack, we'll call this our leading edge. It's pretty sharp. Comes down here like that, it's pretty sharp. And then it stops right about there. Got another one here. So this whole area here are, in my case, my little reptile my dinosaur can really emerge from the crack. I think what I'll do now is have a have kind of a curve, like a reverse question mark curve right there. And then here, the thickness of the curve 
get a little bit thinner until we come up here. It's going to be the bottom of the jaw of my beast. Where I have the bottom of my jaw. A little curve right there. And then it'll come flat now. Right about there. Don't, don't want it to go too long. We'll stop and then kind of a bump right there. here just a real subtle curve and that comes outside it's kind of like lips bump small bump curve to the brow ridge here yeah to the brow ridge so back neck opening up into the body getting wider brow ridge I think I'll bring that brow ridge around and then kind of do that Get the curve of the jaw here got an upward facing curve and then it comes around real skinny curve around that's the brow ridge of our beast Right now, since we're getting into detail, I'm going to sharpen my pencil a little bit. I'll start at the back with really kind of a zigzag pattern. Some smaller than others, some bigger. Some zigzags go all the way to the bottom of the jaw. Some zigzags are skinnier. And this is gonna be the teeth and very sharp ma uh, mouth, formidable mouth of my creature. Up here, I'm gonna have a circle. This is a membrane circle that separates the brow curve from the jaw curve. And then another circle in here. I'm going to have a, an oval right in here, separating the eye from the nostril. And then here, yes, I'm going to imagine a full circle right here, but we only see part of it. We'll put a sharp shape right there. And this top part right here, will erase because that part of the eye is under the brow ridge. So we have this very soft flesh. It's called a membrane. There's no bone behind it. There's cartilage. There might be a space with some muscle. Right before, we're going to have a pretty skinny nostril. This is the nose. And remember, we can shade and fill in with color, so I do expect that when you complete your sketch session with me today, you leave it alone until next time. Until next time, you make stuff with Mr. Hoon. I'm going to introduce uh, some ideas, uh, revisit some color theory, and talk about how we're going to apply marker more effectively. So I do want you to avoid lots of detail right now. Add your detail when you're adding color. Please don't hesitate to read the rubric involving standards, how we're approaching this lesson as a series of drafts that I give you positive, negative feedback on and constructive criticism and tell you submit something that is polished complete and revised um, also there's a very clear rubric for grading it's all on the Google classroom assignment page and of course you can always reach out to me you'll see that there's some segments here I'm gonna create some scales form here but you'll see there's segments underneath 
this kind of like thick belly armor. Big thick scales there. Before we get into a lot of different detail, I'm just going to erase a small area on the leading edge of this crack in the egg. And I think I want a big claw. See some of the finger too. See that that little creature is starting to get a sense of its world, new smells, new sights. What is it capable of? Oh, look, I can push on the shell and little parts of it fall. And that reminds me, I might have a little part of the shell right here that later I'm going to show you how to add depth to. As it is now, we've got a light source coming from the upper left. We know our core shadow is here. So if I just very loosely with a light pencil, not the 6B, but maybe a 5H, very loosely show the curve that flattens out at the equator and then it goes opposite directions. And this just reminds us how shading is going to occur. And then I could fill in loosely, scribbling. This right here. So we've got a beginning of our sketch. Um, I think it's important that I erase, you know, lines that are no longer necessary, like this horizon line in here, totally unnecessary. And let's not forget, I'm going to be covering much of it up with blending, with values, with details. So that ghost of a of a line, right? used a hard line for you so you could really see it. That ghost of line will be covered up with our egg. Right on. Well, this is it for today. I'm making stuff with Mr. Hoon. This is the beginning of our capstone project. And uh, thanks for being with me. I'm going to quickly turn this video into a YouTube segment. And I'll put the link up on your capstone project. Have a spectacular day, young ones. Thanks so much. Bye.